<clears throat> we've got Judy, uh, IRA phase out question. You gotta like these. Now this one, um, this one I changed up a little bit today in, in preparation for our group here tonight. So let, let, let me see if I can get any of you to get this right, right here. Uh, I'll, I'll walk you through it, but let's look at the last question first. So how much of Mike's contribution is deductible? Now you're going to, you're going to probably figure out that this is fairly quickly. This is an IRA contribution deduction question. And what we're, we're going to be, what you're going to remind yourself of is that <clears throat> if I have a married couple, because the married couple is going to be more difficult and um, husband and wife are both working probably what they're going to do to us is they're going to say either the husband or the wife one of the two is covered by a qualified plan and the other is not all right and why are they going to do that well they can just say that they can use a single person as an example but that's that's going to be a little bit too easy because with the married couple we have um but we have a complexity there so anyway so we got judy she's an uh, right out right out of the gate she is an active participant all right louise you're saying judy can't all right well let's see you're probably right so Judy is an active participant in employer sponsored retirement plan. Uh, I don't know if they'll they'll sneak this in on you. Like if you've got a DC defied contribution plan, if it's available to you and you opt out of it, you're not contributing. There, there are no contributions made by the employer. You're not benefiting at all. Then you can be considered non-active. If you have a defined benefit plan then that defined benefit plan, even if you opt out of it, you're still considered an active participant. All right, let's see what we got. A couple of questions, it looks like. And let's let Sharon in. Oh, did the, did the names get mixed up? Hold on a second. Where's Arlene? Hold on. Here's Judy. Uh, let me uh, read through it and I'll fix it. They're combined 2020 with Mike's portion of Judy's portion. They how much of Arlene's? Okay, let's go with Judy. I was actually using the names of my my old uh, my old neighbors. And so anyway, so there we go. It's Judy. Arlene's out of the picture. Arlene was my our, it was before we moved our dear dear neighbor who was in her early 80s, sharp as a tack and talk like a trucker i mean we loved her we still do she's still around she's not going anywhere um but anyway um so anyway combined agi is 20 uh, 206 000 for the year mike's portion of their agi is 111 judy's portion is 95 they each contributed six thousand to the i to an ira this year how much of judy's ira contribution is deductible and then how much of Mike's contribution is deductible? I don't, we don't care who brought in the income. The AGI is the AGI. So that's where I decided I'd get a little bit cute uh, with you guys and try to throw that in because you might be aware and you can just look at your appendix G, but you're aware that the person that is covered by, who's considered an active participant has a phase out between 105 and 125. Let's separate that. And then the person that is not covered, but is married to somebody who's covered, their phase out is 198 to 208,000. Okay. That's why I said the complexity of the married couple is different. Um, so, but again, we don't care that Mike contributed 111 to the household and Judy uh, contributed 95,000 combined. Uh, where are we at? 111, that's 206,000. And will that phase out be in the provide? Yeah, 
Carrie, that is on that Appendix G. Exactly. You don't have to remember it. Uh, unfortunately, I had to remember it back when I took the exam. That was awful. All right. That, yeah, that was that was fantastic. I have to remember that. And um, okay, so now we've got this combined EGI of 206,000. Automatically, we should see that Judy, while she, yes, definitely can contribute six grand to an IRA, there's no problem there. She just can't deduct, deduct any of it. Uh, Mike, while we can see that, um, that he's just going to come in at the top end of the threshold. Now, how do I deal with the thresholds again? You guys might have your own system. I just like looking at what's the total difference here. It, that, and I just put, I use that as my denominator. And I just think of, hey, once I cross over this 198,000, I'm getting into this like danger zone area where something bad is going to happen. And, you know, by what amount are we into this so-called danger zone? Well, their AGI is 206. The bottom end of this threshold is 198. And we're 8,000 into this thing. Okay, so let's put 8,000 into this thing. That, of course, 8,000 divided by 10 is 80%. And when we're doing ratios like this, remember when I said back in week one or two, when we're doing th ratios, we're always excluding something. Well, so what can we exclude here? We're going to exclude the ability of Mike to deduct the entire six grand. In fact, he's going to be able to not use 80% of that $6,000. That should be 4,200. So 4,800. So uh, how, how much of Mike's contribution is deductible? Well, he can't, he can contribute six grand, but he cannot deduct 4,800 of it. Therefore, he can deduct 1,200. And that's going to be a $6,000 contribution. No, Luis, he is forbidden. He cannot deduct 4,800. And, um, yeah, I think if, yeah, Luis, if you were here a couple of weeks ago, it'd be impossible for you to remember. But um, what I mentioned, what I mentioned is that anytime we're doing a ratio like this, okay, or we're excluding something, we're always going to be wanting to exclude, excluding something like an annuity payment. There's, we have the exclusion ratio. There was an example I gave a couple of weeks ago about something else where, oh, with the, um, what the real estate, not the real estate, it is, if you don't have a certain amount of coverage, like the actual uh, certain amount of coverage on your real estate, okay, and then if we have a partial loss, that we're dealing with something that we're excluding from coverage. Everything, when we're doing ratios, we want to exclude. So that you just, or you want to think about it, if you do a ratio that you're always going to do it, as if you're including something. I, I don't care which lane that you take. I always just do excluding, okay? All right, now also watch watch out on the exam because what they're gonna do, because they're a little bit tricky with some of these things, they're not gonna say, you know, they each contributed six grand. They're gonna say, you know, they, they, um, Mike, you know, he contributed 5,300. And then Judy over here did like uh, $400 or something. And they're going to, and they're going to put both of them. They're going to put their AGI in an amount that's between 105 and 125. So both of them can take a deduction and you're going to, in whatever that exclusion amount is, you're going to multiply it times what they contributed. Okay. You can't do that. What we're doing, what they're excluding, what we're excluding is a portion of the $6,000 IRA maximum or $7,000 IRA maximum. So if these two were 50 or over, we'd actually use $7,000 here and they would not be able to deduct 80% of the seven grand. 